Welcome, everybody, to the 2021 TAG uh, Georgia Technology Summit. My name is Ken Meyer. I am an EVP and Divisional CIO for Channel uh, Engineering and Innovation at Truist. Uh, and today, I am really excited to not talk about banking. Uh, we're going to talk about how sports are being reinvented through technology. And we've got some really great guests today that are, are going to, to help us unpack just how technology is ultimately impacting you as a, as a fan of sports, as well as uh, the, the institutions and organizations themselves. Uh, so first, let me introduce Ken Martin of Cisco. Ken is the Managing Director of Global Sales for Sports and Entertainment. Uh, Ken, welcome, and why don't you give us a little bit of background about what you do every day there at Cisco. Thanks, Ken. And, and that won't be confusing that we go back and forth with Ken. But uh, yeah, 16 years at Cisco um, and 14 of those have been really focused in on uh, leading this industry um, globally. So um, my team is, is, uh, is designed to um, be an overlay to 18,000 salespeople here at Cisco and, and really come with the industry expertise. So our focus is on, on working with um, large public venues, um, and, and often the, those are referred to as, as sport and entertainment venues. Um, but, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, transitions uh, in this industry that we'll get into today. i um, excited to uh, share with what we've learned and, and what we see moving forward. Awesome. And we also have Brian Gorney with us from Verizon. He is the Managing Director of Enterprise Sales with a focus on uh, pro sports. Ryan, welcome. How about you give us a little bit of intro for yourself as well? Hey, thanks, Ken. Uh, yeah, excited to be here. Uh, so based in Atlanta, uh, I've been with Verizon for a number of years uh, and have responsibility for commercial enterprise sales across the Eastern US and then a carve out uh, of that a specific subset uh, focus on pro sports and, and venues. So for us, uh, you know, that's, that's a focus around uh, leveraging the platforms and the technology that, that Verizon has made investments in to drive fan experiences and outcomes uh, for the teams and the leagues as well. So excited uh, to be here and look forward to the conversation today. Awesome. So why don't we dive right in? Uh, Brian, you just talked about investments. So why don't we talk about just broader VC sports tech investments um, you know, if you look at recent numbers, we're projected to hit nearly $30 billion in investments by 2024. Uh, what do you personally think is driving this influx of investments? Yeah, great, great question, Ken. So I, I think it's a few things, uh, you know, especially post pandemic, right? And in this world of social media and on demand entertainment, the leagues and the teams, just like any other business, right? They're, they're looking for ways to connect more deeply, uh, create more unique experiences with us as consumers and fans. And I think a couple of different ways they're doing that. Uh, one, of course, is by leveraging more and better data, right? So they're making investments in areas like analytics, whether that comes off of you know, Wi-Fi or a team or a league-based app um, so that they can better market uh, their, their service games and teams and merchandise, et cetera, to us. Um, so that's one area. I think a couple of others, uh, innovation and broadcasting, uh, you know, 4K and 8K streaming uh, is a big thing. And we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, throughout the conversation. Uh, and then lastly, uh, certainly a big one, uh, sports and betting. Uh, I think there's 14 states now that are active, another eight who are approved and working towards enabling, and, you know, another half dozen or so who are um, in that in that process so th those are some of the things that we see driving the investment uh overall ken want to comment on that from your perspective as well yeah i i echo with uh what brian says i mean looks sports media rights is is always going to be the the, the top money maker um it's a 14 billion dollar business in north america alone 21 billion dollars globally and that's expected to uh to rise 75 percent in the next five years so but it's it's really you know the the, the media experience has changed so dramatically um, you know over the last fifty years even the last ten years, so how do you capitalize on that? And it's really you know um, 
you know, bringing the world together through new media experiences, how, you know, how to engage in, in the new fan. Um, and, and we'll, we'll dive in more into this, but it's really, really focused around that, you know, the fan consumes sports differently. Um, they consume entertainment differently. Um, and it's up to these venues to really understand how to, um, how to capture that, you know, sports fans don't want to go and watch the game anymore. They want to do the game right? They want to be immersed. They want to, you know, uh, share their experiences with others, um, whether through gamification, um, in sport betting, um, you know, all of that comes into play here. Um, but, you know, the broadcast is a big piece of that and, and it'll, it'll continue to evolve uh, over the next uh, several years. So we, we will touch a little bit about fan experience, but given this is a tech summit, let's maybe dive into a little bit of the technology itself. And you guys covered a wide variety of technologies and kind of where the investments are being made. But when you get to brass tacks and you look at the technology that's supporting this stuff, what are some of those technologies that you think are making that biggest impact and, and really why ultimately, and, and maybe Ken, we'll, we'll stay with you first. Well, I think that, you know, what we've seen, you know, develop over the years is um, ways in which you can communicate to the guest that is in your venue. Um, and the way you communicate is obviously through the phone that everybody is carrying around in their pocket. So connectivity is going to be key. Um, and, and now, you know, the, the new, you know, uh, way in which we uh, go to these venues um, with safety and security being, you know, top of mind, it, it's through that connectivity through the mobile device um, and connectivity, that layer, um, Brian and, and Verizon is key on, you know, delivering 5G, um, it's Wi-Fi 6, it's the throughput that the, the connectivity offers today. Um, is second to none. And so, you know, what you don't want to have to worry about is, is somebody um, battling with, you know, throughput and connectivity and, you know, can I upload my images, download my, you know, videos, um, an app to get into the venue uh, through ticketless entry, um, show my credentials, whatever. You don't want to worry about um, having the, um, the, the limitation of that connectivity um, slow you down. So, We'll see it more and more. And then, you know, the, the throughput is, is key. You know, if we're talking about real time gaming um, and, you know, sports bet and, you know, whatnot, you can't have a delay on, um, on that mobile experience. So I think that that is, is, uh, is key um, to, to everything that we do, uh, venue related moving forward. Um, and I also believe that, you know, the, the media platform will play a significant role in that as well. So it's not just um, it's not just through the mobile device, but it's, you know, let's get everybody's heads up and, and let's talk about the, uh, the, the media canvas, if you will, and how do you monetize that and how sponsors activate their brands and um, how you're advertising to your guests that walk into the venue. Um, I think that those will play an important role. So if you see those two technologies emerging, coming together as a single pane of glass, that's what we've been focused on, you know, for the last several years. And I think that it'll just continue to develop. Yeah, Brian, I will tell you, you know, Ken's comments about the real time resonate for sure as a fantasy football player who mm -hmm. was frantically refreshing my phone to make sure that I see every update every minute uh, during our championship week. <laughs> but uh, Brian, any additional things you want to add there? Yeah, hey, Ken, hopefully that uh, fantasy is uh sports is on uh, is on yahoo uh just call it out <laughs> real quick uh, a quick plug um but I, I think everything that ken said real time is certainly a key focus from a technology perspective uh I, i've been exposed there was something recently uh that i've been exposed to uh called lidar uh, which is light detection and ranging so think about combining this kind of light sensing that uh, uh capability with ai it gives venues themselves, right, the ability to manage, um, you know, traffic, traffic patterns, traffic congestion, you know, improve wayfinding, those types of things. So I think it's all the things that Ken mentioned uh, in and around media and real time and uh, betting as well. And we, we variety at Verizon see ourselves as an enabler of that real, those real time experiences and real time technologies through things like 5G you know, edge compute and some of the other points that uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into a little bit here through the, through the conversation today. Yeah. So 
let's shift a little bit to that fan piece of it, right? And I know when we talk about our business at Truist, we're always talking about, you know, putting the client at the center of what we do and really understanding what our client's needs are and how we can better that experience. When you think about fan engagement, uh, both in, you know, in venue as well as from anywhere that they're at, yeah, how are you seeing organizations leverage technology to really enhance that overall fan experience? And Brian, let, let's go with you first. Yeah, so I, I would uh, just to, to pile on the, the prior comments, right? Um, a lot of investment, both in terms of the in-venue experience, but also the time, you know, during, excuse me, before and after the game, right? And can, kind of creating this continuous connection with the fan. Um, we, we see, and some of this is work that we do with, uh, with Ken and, and the team at Cisco, we see a lot of investment in uh, you know, enhanced Wi-Fi and analytic systems uh, in and around the venues themselves. For us, from a, a Verizon-specific perspective, we'll have 5G deployed in uh, right at 90 major venues uh, in the US by the end of 2021. And there's some really cool stuff that, that'll come along with that. Um, uh, one key point there of those 90 venues, and that number will obviously increase into 2022, uh, we'll have edge compute capability enabled at about 75% of that number by the end of this year. So that just goes back to enabling those real-time experiences and allowing applications and you know, content to be delivered or run uh, on the edge. So those are some of the things that, that we're seeing from the, the interest in from the leagues and the, and the teams themselves. Ken, additional thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, we, um, you know, we're, we're often referred to, you know, for obvious reasons, a technology company, but, um, but really we're, we're in the enablement business, um, you know, enabling a better uh, mobile experience, um, you know, through the, the things that we just discussed, um, enabling, you know, a, um, a better overall experience, you know, visually, um, you know, we've worked with, it's not, you know, that we're just doing new venues, right? It's, there's, there's thousands of stadiums around the world that say, you know, look, we need to, you know, uh, continue to update our, our venue to compete with um, the in-home experience even, right? Um, and so, uh, a lot of that will be through, um, you know, the use of what content you send to, you know, a video wall or uh, an LED that's wrapped around the front of the building. Um, you know, in Southern California, the newest stadium in SoFi, I mean, they're even putting uh, broadcast uh, on the roof for uh, planes that fly over, you know, so you can actually watch the game uh, from the, the roof of SoFi. So, um, we enable those types of experiences. And so, um, you know, I know technology is, is the thing that's bringing everything together, but we focus on, you know, what can we creatively do to a screen that, um, that gets people excited about, you know, consuming the game and making it an overall experience uh, versus just taking in the match itself or, you know, the concert itself. The experience should start from the, the moment you leave your home uh, to go down to the venue. And so we're leveraging technology, not just our own. Um, you know, I know uh, Yahoo Sports has been using, you know, uh, this time to find um, new ways to connect with their, their uh, fans and their partners. And um, I think it's, you know, it's a wonderful time to be in the technology game, but, you know, it's through enablement of these experiences. So you guys are both talking about just constantly enabling these amazing fan experiences with tech, but what is, what's stopping us from just blowing the roof off of this thing and really kind of making it something just unimaginable from an experience perspective? Like what, what do you guys think is holding some of the, the technology maybe, or, or other things back from really transforming the space? Ken, why don't you jump in first there? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a couple things. Um, one, I think it's it's um, you know there's so many technologies that are coming at uh, each one of these venues. Um, it's hard to decide you know which platform to ride or what technology is the best. Um, and they you know we we really need to act like consultants to help out the industry as a whole and and kind of narrow down some of the choices. Um, because I don't think it's a lack of wanting to have technology. Everybody wants, you know, cashless, um, you know, payments. Everybody wants, you know, somebody to be able to enter 
uh, into the venue uh, through an electronic ticket um, and be able to change and, and you know, move those tickets around um, easily or upgrade their seats easily, you know, type of thing. Um, I think what's preventing a lot of, you, you know, if we look at top tier um, professional sports or, you know, um, even universities, it's always that limitation of I don't have the money to do it. Oh, I have a desire, but I don't have the money. So I believe that, you know, we're going to have to find creative ways in which, you know, people can, uh, these, these universities, these, you know, professional teams can consume technology. And so, um, you know, even at Cisco, we're working on some ways in which um, we help with that. Um, not just, you know, can I make a payment over time, but um, uh, cons consumption models as, you know, pay as a service, you know, so uh, I don't want to own the technology. I just want to use the technology and allow me to pay for the technology as I use it or as I consume it. Um, I think it's, it's the creativity around uh, enabling people to, um, to bring on technology um, and maybe it's creative financing that that's going to help us through that. And maybe you need great bank partners to help you enable some of this. <laughs> so we might be able to talk about that later. Uh, Brian, any any additional comments there? Yeah, I, think I can uh, hit a lot of key points. I'll just add pro probably uh, a, a little bit of a blip or a bump in the road with the pandemic. So you know, I know in a lot of cases, the leagues and, and the teams as well are watching uh, very closely kind of fan uh, behavior, if you will, as we come uh, out of the pandemic or move into, you know, post-pandemic uh, life. As a quick example, you know, we, we uh, were speaking recently with the owner of a very large venue, 150,000 plus seats. And, you know, they're looking at, hey, is, are, are we ever going to be at a point where for our particular sport and, you know, with our particular uh, uh, set, of, set of fans and, and prospective fans, are we going to ever put 150,000 fans in the seats at one time. And they're also looking at, you know, is that, a, is that number get smaller at some point, but it's more focused around that end-to-end -end experience that Ken mentioned, you know, before, during, and after the game. And ultimately maybe that, that, that number of grandstands comes down a little bit. So I, th I think we're just going to see a little bit of a shift between the in-venue focus and investment and that, you know, end-to-end -end before, during, and after uh, the game or the event itself. Yeah, it's great. So, I mean, when people think of sports, they obviously think of a lot of dollars, right, in that ecosystem. It, but when you really think about sports technology, this is a multi-trillion dollar ecosystem that we're talking about. Uh, and you guys talked about 5G. You talked a little bit about uh, the rise of esports in real time and, and gambling. One thing we haven't talked about yet is around the whole digital collectibles trading and, and the usage of blockchain and other things there. But, you know, as these things continue to, to, to surface and then you've got the deep tech around smart venues that you talked about. I mean, I didn't know about the whole SoFi and the screen on the, the roof of the building. That's pretty phenomenal. And cool. Uh, and, and some of you talked about things like analytics and, and you know the overall safety and the the in-game experience, but are there any of these areas that that you look at and you go, man, this is really going to take off, right? More so maybe than some of the others. Um, and and I know that's a little bit of a crystal ball question, given that we're coming out of hopefully a pandemic situation. But anything that stands out maybe more so than others for either of you, and and we'll start with Brian maybe on this one. Yeah. Uh Thanks, Ken. I, I, I'll just call out a couple of things uh, that we've touched on, but, you know, we've used the, we probably used the phrase real time, uh, you know, 10, 10 or 10, 10 or a dozen times at this point. I, I think the, the technology and the innovation that firms like Cisco and Verizon are bringing to bear, um, the gaming and the sports betting uh, space is one in particular. If you think about the dynamics associated with in game or in event, real-time sports betting, uh, that, that's going to be something that, that really drives a lot of activity forward, especially as the state legislatures um, approve and put those, those wheels in motion. And then the other thing, and I mentioned, you know, LIDAR is just a quick example. There are certainly many others, but I think in, in venue uh, experience, but also health and safety and, you know, leveraging uh, various technologies to help the venue uh, themselves manage 
crowd, congest crowd congestion, wayfinding, those types of things, and more and more investment around, you know, the fan being able to consume that experience uh, on the mobile device itself. So those are a few of the areas that we see ecosystem-wise that, um, you know, are going to seem to be carrying forward with a significant amount of momentum. Additional thoughts there, Ken? Yeah, you know, I, I agree. I, I think that, you know, um, we're living in a virtual reality world anymore, you know, where you, you want to be a part of the action. You don't want to go and, and, you know, not all of us have the best seat in the house. And so you, you want to, um, you know, technology to bring you into the feeling of the game. Um, we're, there's, there's a lot of things that are happening right now, you know, specifically through broadcast and, you know, analytics and real-time data, um, gens of the phone, but you think about AI experiences as well. And the ability to take a camera feed um, and, you know, from somebody you know, like a ref or a player um, that's in the game and being able to broadcast that, that feed um, and, you know, be able to watch it like you're on the field um, and see, you know, uh, a 250 pound, you know, center back coming at you in real time. And, and, you know, being able to watch your favorite players is say you're in a VIP or suite um, type of experience and, and be able to um, just to track the players that you want to watch all time um, in real time. Um, I think those are some of the experiences that, you know, we're working our way to uh, a lot of it feeds back to the broadcast, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of different companies out there that are bringing us these you know, real uh, 360 views of the game and it makes us feel as though we're a part of it, um, immersed in it. I think yeah. that's, that's what's really cool to me, at least moving forward. I even think about if we just stay in the state for a second, the fact that, you know, I think the Masters app is one of the most downloaded apps and it only happens once a week. All right. You can pretty much watch anything that you want at any point in time and follow what you want right versus just watching the broadcast on the television so pretty pretty phenomenal immersion if you use that even as a simple example um so let me be a fan a little bit right and just kind of to to get excited here to see wh where are you all spending your time with different leagues and and teams uh you know you think about the relationships that you both have across you know, whether it's the, the, the leagues themselves or individual teams, but, but who are you spending time with and, and what are they asking you to look at specifically? And maybe Ken, let, let's start with you. Uh, for, for years, we've been trying to bridge um, that, that gap that exists between people and technology that exists in these venues and the people that are in sales and, and marketing in these venues. And so, um, because we see that relationship um, became, becoming more and more uh, important for everybody moving forward, uh, for the game, the the fan that goes to the game, to you know the sponsors that are spending you know a lot of money to uh, market their brands in venues, um, and and being able to uh, you know kind of bridge the gap between uh, those relationships so that. You know, a sales campaign, you know, let's try something different. Let's push something down to the mobile device. Let's advertise happy hour um, and dynamically change the pricing of what we offer to the menus and in, in the concessions. Um, all of that is possible, but not everybody realizes um, how possible that that truly is today. Um, and it's actually leveraging technology. And so um, where, you know, in years past, you know, you go to somebody, you know, a CRO didn't, didn't exist, but somebody in sales and marketing um, and asked what the relationship is with IT and they wouldn't even know who the IT person is, right? So I, I think that organizationally, there, everybody's coming together and saying, okay, how do we leverage technology to improve revenue streams or, you know, better just the overall experience inside the venue? Um, if I think about, uh, you know, even the people that the, the companies that are spending money to market their brands, they're going to be measured differently as well. It's going, it's not just, you know, brand association um, that's going to pay the bills anymore. It's, you know, these, these CMOs that are associated with these companies are going to be measured on how um, effective their brand campaign is. And if the venue can't just, you know, um, turn back to these sponsors and say, 
you know, this is, this was, uh, you know, um, this is effective in the first half of the game or, or, you know, it was more effective in the second half or, you know, how many people did we actually get down to the car dealership to take a test drive? Um, you know, that these, these uh, CMOs are going to turn to, you know, a venue that can offer that up. So I think in general, th things are changing, the landscape's changing, but I think it's, you know, trying to bring everybody, you know, together um, is the key. That's a long-winded way to answer your question, Ken. But oh, you're good. Saying. You're good. That's great, Brian. <laughs> additional thoughts there, and I've got a little bit of a follow-up question on that one. But keep going. Yeah, I'll just I'll uh, agree with things Ken said. I, you know, that that whole notion of uh, and for us, and I think similar for Cisco. You know, this the sponsorship activation uh, uh, activity. That's a that's a big focus for us, Sp specifically Ken uh, with Verizon. We have uh, public and official partnerships. Uh, I think we're the official 5G and wireless uh, provider for the NFL, uh, NHL, as well as NASCAR. Um, a lot of it, within those relationships, there's uh, different tenants, if you will. Some of that relates to uh, broadcast rights uh, that we leverage across our FiOS platform uh, for those in the Northeast and then uh, Yahoo Sports as well, which we've mentioned a couple of different times. Um, Yahoo Sports has a specific broadcasting relationship with the NBA as well. So we're, we're pretty active with most of the major leagues uh, and a number um, of the different teams in each of those leagues. In the, in the case of NASCAR, um, a lot of work there just in around um, uh, the tracks themselves and working on some of the things that we've been talking about, you know, enabling uh, more real-time experiences. And the last quick comment, another area that's related to the teams and the leagues, I think, but just uh, esports in general, right? So we've got some partnerships, uh, probably more to come, but uh, Riot Games and Epic, who, uh, if you're familiar with Epic, you know, they Fortnite and a few other uh, big, big uh, names out there. We've got some activity uh, in that space as well. So a shameless plug for the event uh, for everybody to check out the NASCAR keynote. Uh, so Brian mentioned NASCAR a couple times, yeah. but but the, just a quick follow-up question. I mean, I think what's really fascinating to me is that the amount of money that ultimately is being created with new revenue streams as a result of some of these technologies that are cycling and filtering their way back into the sports themselves. So when you really think about it, the introduction of technology in a way is potentially putting a more competitive and even better product on the field because teams are getting increased salary caps and other types of things that is directly as a result of TV deals and sponsorships and other things that are benefiting the broader you know, organizations themselves. So, you know, just curious as you guys are working in this every day, and I know it's hard you know, even for us sometimes to, to take a step back out of what we're doing. Do you guys see the impact that the technology is making just not on, you know, on the, the tech and the experience or with the teams directly, but just a little bit broader on the product of, of what's being put on the fields and on the courts and ice and other things? Brian, maybe you could, you could add there. Yeah. So I think the answer is yes, and two two specifics. One, I mean, you kind of mentioned it, but the the in game, I, we call it the the competitive or team analytics, um, things like player puck tracking in the NHL, uh, shot tracker, which is used some, some uh, somewhat widely across um, the NCAA. We see those things taking hold, and you know that even that even relates to fan experience. If you're watching the game on a, on an, on your device or on uh, traditional broadcast, right? You take advantage of that. We just we just watched the Masters this past weekend, right? With the uh, the ball flight capability, of course. Um, and then I, I would say broadly, Ken. And one one thing that uh, I've learned since I've started doing some work in this space, the investment and the technology in and around what's you know what we would call back of house, just the venue or the event operations. If you think about 50, 80, or 100,000 people coming in for a game day experience and all the things associated with, you know, parking, merchandising, finding amenities, um, you know, you name it. it, the way that the venues and the leagues and the teams are using technology to organize and create a better 
kind of game day experience, not just the game itself, but all the, the amenities and peripherals is, um, is pretty fascinating stuff as well. Yeah, I, I, you know, look, I think IOT will and sensors, you know, play an important role, you know, um, not not just, you know, sensors in a ball to know, you know, the, the path flight, the sensors that they put on, you know, players to know, you know, um, are they peaking? Um, what's their, you know, physical condition? I think this is good for players. I think this is good for coaches. I think it's good for ownership, right? It's, um, you know, uh, I remember 10 years ago, I was up in Vancouver um, and Mr. Accolini came off the ice and, you know, for the Canucks, you know, wearing all these, he had sensors all over himself. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, you know, I want to know, you know, uh, my heart rate and how long I've skated and, you know, how has it changed? That obviously that technology has come a long way now, right? I mean, we're sensors in, embedded into the jerseys themselves, but it gives, um, you know, that real time data, uh, which, like I say, is important on the business side of things, you know, how is the athlete performing and, you know, what are we doing? you know, theoretically, you can get that data if you wanted to. And I know there's rights that prevent this, but, you know, you can serve that data up to the guests as well, you know, to say, hey, look, you know, is this guy is about to take a PK? Is, is his heart rate up? Is it, you know, has it changed at all? I mean, people get into that, right? As a fan, we, we love the ability to consume that type of uh, information. Um, on the business side or on the venue side, I mean, look, we're, we're putting sensors, you know, in, in, you know, craziest things to make the venue more efficient. Um, U.S. Bank Stadium, you know, we're putting sensors on the kegs down in the, uh, in the bottom of the stadium simply because people were going down and changing the kegs before they needed to be changed. Um, a lot of people don't know there's 60,000 gallons of, you know, of beer that are rolling through the lines of, you know, of a, of a stadium at all times, you know, do we have a leak is what's the, you know, the temperature of the, you know, um, of the beer, you know, all these wonderful things. We, we have access to all this data through IOT. What we do with the data is, is obviously important. Um, but, um, certainly having that data and being able to extract that data, um, can change the experience across the board. So Ken, you failed my man. You weren't supposed to talk about us bank stadium. You're oh, supposed to talk about Travis park. That's right. Um, but we can right. we can handle that later. It's not a big deal. Uh, but look, I, I think when we talk coming back along to the venture side of things, right? So I know Brian Verizon Ventures has been very active in sports technology. You know, where do you guys see uh, your investments going and, and maybe some examples that you might be able to provide there? Yeah, great, great question. So I'll, I'll just call out a couple of things. Um, if you know, for the Super Bowl uh, earlier this year in Tampa, um, with with 5G and some of the edge capabilities, uh, we we enabled some ecosystem partners around. Um, and Ken mentioned a couple of these earlier, right? Uh, accelerated uh, fan access capability, uh, crowd vision, uh, you know, thermal scanning, a few other few other types of uh, uh, sort of venue related capabilities. So we're we're going to do more and, and and make investments there. Um, Verizon Ventures in particular, there are two and uh, two that I'll call out. Shot Tracker is one I've mentioned previously. So uh, there's there's a, an interest and, and a focus there um, in that that technology and that that firm specifically. And there's another one, uh, YBVR, which is basically um, 4K and 8K 360 streaming capability, which is which is pretty cool stuff. So things like that that connect to some of the capabilities that you know we we can bring to bear through the assets we own and operate um, are the types of things that you know I, I think you'll see. And then the the partnership side I mentioned Epic, uh, another Super Bowl related example for us was the virtual uh, the Fortnite five G stadium, which was basically a virtual experience that we created um, in and around the Super Bowl this year. So those types of things. There's obviously you know the possibilities are somewhat endless and just a really um, exciting space to watch and, and be a part of. I'm going to need you guys to get the 8K TV costs down a little bit somehow because <laughs> I'm in the market for one and, and it. it's probably not in the cards this go around. Uh, Ken, any other comments around like adventures and investing in, in areas that you guys might be focused in? Uh, yeah, for us, it's, um, you know, nobody's building a stadium anymore. Everybody's building a small, smart city uh, around a stadium. Uh, and so 
we're, we're going to continue to focus in putting the intelligence into the network um, so that you have one converged network. I mean, the network itself is, is, is becoming as, as important as, um, you know, water and energy and, and gas. And in, in a lot of these cases, there's the fourth utility. So, you know, you'll continue to see Cisco, you know, cause that is our bread and butter to build out the intelligence. What you plug into that, whether it be, you know, um, the uh, connectivity through the mobile experience and a 5G and our partnership with, you know, Verizon or, you know, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 6, the analytics that you get out of that, or if you're plugging in IPTV, you know, which is something that we've really been focused on for a decade plus, um, security, collaboration, but, uh, you know, going forward, it's getting into these smart buildings. How do you take and leverage the, the network and, you know, uh, power over Ethernet to drive down the cost of actually building a building um, and leveraging, you know, and doing some things that, you know, you typically wouldn't see in a traditional way in which a, a building is constructed. So uh, stay tuned there um, is really creative, um, you know, things that uh, Cisco is coming out with. Um, Ken, I was yeah, just going to say, we got a couple minutes left. What yeah. would be one thing that you just want to leave the audience with that you that you think is uh, different or cool or something that, you know, Cisco's pushing big time in this space, maybe? Um, you know, I, I would say that, you know, it, it is leveraging the venue as a media platform. Um, you know, your, the, your limitation is your, your creativity. We're doing everything from you know real time stats to you know information, the ability to to pull all this th these things together. But really, look at your venue as a media platform. How can you get the most out of it? And I don't just mean you know the screens that are on the wall, but the screens that are in everybody's pocket. We're just going to continue to develop on that, and and leveraging 4K and 8K and our broadcast video and and everything that we're doing there to bring in some of these just really unique. Um, can't get at home experiences. Uh, I think that that's where, where we'll continue to focus and we'll continue to reinvent ourselves in this space. All right, Brian, what about you and Verizon? Last word on the, on the topic. Yeah, I'll just uh, quickly call out. I mean, it, it, to Ken's point for us, similarly, it's, it's about enabling these real time experiences. Um, you know, I'll mention the focus in and around 5g. And I think there's two things I'd call out there, right. From a venue perspective, number one, There'll be more capability uh, and examples there as more of us as fans and consumers get 5G uh, devices and, and handsets right in, in, into, our, uh, into our hands, so to speak. And uh, lastly, just the, the edge compute and processing capability that uh, just from an, and it's, it's really not about the, the edge capability, it's about the application delivery, it's about the content distribution, and it's about that real-time experience. So I think those are the types of things that we'll continue to uh, be involved in, and you know, enable uh, across the the uh, the spectrum that we're we're talking to here. Yeah, well, Ken, guys, I think that. Yeah, ahead, Ken. No, sorry, I, I was just going to say, we, you know, we just announced a, um, a you know partnership with the NFL um, yesterday, and, and I know that uh, you know Brian and Verizon, uh, you know, have been a, a partner of of the NFL for quite some time. The intent here is not to work in parallel paths. The intent is to leverage what Cisco does and what Verizon does and mm -hmm. make it a connected league and, and, and have all 32 teams yeah. in the NFL and other uh, you know, leagues beyond that take advantage of what we can be doing together. And so stay yeah. tuned for, uh, for that because I think there's some exciting things that we're going we're gonna to be able to announce. I think the cooperation between all these different companies that are coming together ultimately leads just to a better fan experience overall. So I think we all win uh, when all of us continue to play well in the sandbox. But look, I, I will say this one, thanks to Brian and Ken and, and Verizon and Cisco on, on joining us today. And thank you to Larry and all of the tag team uh, who are putting on a, a fantastic uh, tech summit for this year. So thanks to everybody who joined in. Hopefully it was uh, an exciting topic and, and one that you wouldn't expect to come from a banker. So I appreciate everybody's time today and, and enjoy the rest of your summit.